Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Pastor Gary Bightley, pastor of Ferdinand Word of Faith Family Church. And we've been doing some teachings uh, on the end times, the things that are happening in the earth, things that are happening all around us. Do you know what time it is? I'm not talking about the clock on the wall uh, or on your wristwatch or on your cell phone. I'm talking about do you know the times of the end times, the uh, signs of the times? And Jesus said to the to the Jews in Jerusalem, he wept over them, said, you did not know the time of your visitation. So God has got some spiritual times, and this is what we call the end times. And so we've been doing a series called, Do You Know What Time It Is? And so it's kind of like a, a wake-up call. On my uh, uh, at home, I have a... Uh, an alarm clock that sometimes will wake me up if I want to get up at a particular time. And so I'm kind of like God's alarm clock to the body of Christ because the Lord spoke to me in 1998 and said, prepare my people for living in the last days. Well, uh, we've been doing that since 1998 and uh, we're still continuing to do it as uh, we see that more and more things are happening, uh, prophecy, biblical prophecy, Bible prophecy is, is being fulfilled uh, before our eyes like never before. And so uh, again, we want to go back to uh, the Bible. That's where we get our information from. This is where God's word is. There's prophecies in the Bible. You know, all of God's prophecies are true. Uh, they come to pass. It's the most accurate book in the world. And so if God said something is going to happen, you can mark it down, it's going to happen. And so it's, what is interesting is Jesus said that in the last days, uh, Israel would come back as a nation. And when Israel comes back as a nation, that was indicative of the leaves growing on the fig tree. When you see the leaves growing, he said, know this, that uh, this generation will not pass away before I come back. Israel was made a nation in May 14th, 1948. And so the leaves are growing, and we see them now. And so he, Jesus said, this generation will not pass away before I come back. And so his coming is imminent. It's coming soon. I cannot tell you when. Could be uh, today, could be tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. Could be several years down the road. But the bottom line is time to wake up. And so we've been teaching, uh, the Bible is full full of prophecies about the end times. Sometimes there's just several verses here and there, but then there's whole books that are uh, uh, dedicated to the end times. The book of Revelations, of course, is, is about the end times. Uh, the book of Daniel, is, is much of it is about the end times. Then there's whole chapters in the Bible that are dedicated to letting us know, giving us the information that God wants us to have concerning what we're seeing and what is happening. And so uh, Matthew, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, 25, is uh, two chapters right there. Uh, Mark 13 is another chapter. Luke 21 is another chapter. Then there's some, some uh, quite a bit in uh, First and Second Thessalonians 2 that talk about all the different things that are happening. Book of Jude talks about it. And so it's not just an isolated subject. It's, it's all throughout the Bible. But I want to go back to Matthew 24. Uh, the disciples had was, was with Jesus, they were with Jesus, and they were looking at the temple and they were admiring how beautiful it was and how that it was probably just going to stand forever and ever. And, and Jesus prophesied and said uh, that every, every stone is going to be upturned. And that happened, that prophecy happened about 50 years later. And so, but Jesus began to talk to them. They wanted to know what are going to be the signs of the end? What are going to be the signs of your coming? So Jesus began to list a number of things, and, and uh, we want to go over those a little bit again, but I want to actually start with uh, verse 13, Matthew 24, verse 13. It says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And so the Holy Spirit had spoke that verse to me uh, just a day or two ago, very plain, and said just basically, he that endures unto the end. And the emphasis was on the word endure. And so there are going to be things that we as Christians were going to have to endure. Uh, we don't like to think about these things. We don't, want, you know, we don't want to hear about these things. But we don't want to be ignorant of these things either. And so in the earth, there's going to be physical signs 
in the earth, there's going to be uh, signs, you know, in the church, there's going to be signs, the Bible says, in the skies, in the nations, uh, all different things that will help get our attention. And so uh, in verse 4 of Matthew 25, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So we have to realize that we are living in an hour of tremendous deception. And again, all you've got to do is to, if you just open your eyes and take a look, look at the news. Uh, you know, it's very popular to hear the term fake news. And uh, what we need to understand is all news agencies only tell you what they want you to hear. So it's the news they want you to hear, whether it is accurate or inaccurate or, or uh, they, they manipulate it a little bit. So be very careful what you see on the news. Not everything you see and hear is always the truth. And so uh, again, we need the Bible says it talks about uh, let no man deceive you. Now it's also talking about spiritual deception because Jesus will talk in a few minutes uh, in other verses about uh, uh, false prophets, false teachers, all these different individuals coming in and, and endeavoring to deceive people. And so again, these are things we're going to have to endure. So let's take a look at it. It says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Uh, I saw a man uh, yesterday on, uh, uh, on, on YouTube, and they were arresting him, and he, he was claiming he was God's son. And uh, he was trying to water baptize himself and baptize the police officers. It was kind of hilarious until he started spitting on them. So anyway, but anyway, here's the, this is, there's multitudes, thousands of people out there that are claiming to be the Lord, to be the Messiah, to be God. Okay? And it says, many shall come in my name, say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many people are going to follow. Notice it doesn't say some. It says many now. Now, in these last days, many are going to be deceived. And God's desire, this is why we're doing these things, is so that you do not get deceived. You don't need to be deceived if you'll, if you'll pay attention to God's word. Uh, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're living in a time of great conflict in the earth. Uh, there's conflict, and then there's the rumors, okay? Not just rumors of war, there's rumors of, of uh, uh, takeovers and uh, uh, oh, just all kinds of things. And so the world is going to be full of, of, of rumors and, and full of all kinds of, of dis, uh, distressing things. So there will be wars, okay? There's more wars to come. I'm sorry, you know, people are talking about the peace agreement in the Middle East, and it's great that they've got something down on paper. It's not going to last. Why, why do I say that? Because the Bible says that. They're going to come against Israel, and this is throughout many scriptures. And so uh, it's going to be a time you read Ezekiel 37, 38. tells you there of what's going to happen in the last days, too. And so there's going to be wars and rumors of war. You're going to have to endure all these things. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You're going to have to learn to endure. Okay? Uh, it says, see that you're not troubled, uh, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right? And so, you know, even though these things are happening, the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Right now we're, we're seeing something... Uh, uh, it, the, the word where it says nations, it's the, actually in the Greek it's the word ethnics. And see, we're, we're seeing ethnics rising against ethnics. We're seeing people playing the race card and, and uh, not just, uh, uh, you know, uh, concerning men's, uh, the color of men's skin, but their, their nationality. And so there's all kinds of problems throughout the whole world. And so this is happening more and more. We're going to have to endure these things. We're going to have to make it through these things. Jesus said, if you'll endure to the end, you'll, you'll, you'll be saved. It says, for nations shall rise against nations, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. All right, so there are always been famines in the earth, but these famines are going to become worldwide. We're going to have to be able to endure pestilence. COVID-19 is, is a classic example, and I was thinking that, that uh, uh, with COVID-19, uh, many people did not endure. They just, they dropped out of church. They gave up. I can think of some people that they, they just gave up. You know, they just, they didn't endure COVID-19. And to be honest with you, COVID-19 
is a sneeze compared to some of the uh, epidemics that are coming down the road. And so people have to be able to endure difficult times. And so it says in the book of uh, Acts, I think it's around chapter 14, that, that we through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. I know you don't really want to hear that, but you have to understand uh, we're in the end times. There are going to be difficult times. There are going to be some real bumps in the road. But you know what? We can still make it through, and, and we'll, we'll make it into heaven and into glory. It says, uh, for there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in the earth. We're so glad that the earthquakes are always on the other side of the earth. But you know what? They're coming here too. You know, there, there's going to be some uh, major earthquakes here in Canada, where that's where we're coming from right now. But there's going to be earthquakes all over the place. It's interesting. People always say this too. Well, you know, there's pastor, there's always been earthquakes, you know, throughout the history of the world. But you know what Jesus said that, that we, there would be earthquakes in diverse places. Well, how do we know when there is an earthquake, let's say in Chile or Japan or Russia or San Francisco? How do we know? We have the technology today that they did not have for the past 6,000 years. And so what Jesus was saying was that the, the time will come, man will have the technology to know instantly when an earthquake is happening somewhere in the world. So we're that generation that Jesus prophesied about. And so there's going to be earthquakes. We're going to hear about them, and uh, we're going to actually feel them. I, I know people, they've been in them. I've never been in one myself, but I, I realize that it can happen. Even in areas that have not had earthquakes, uh, there's going to be earthquakes. Some are going to be small. Some are going to be big. Somebody just mentioned to me that in uh, Yellowstone right now, there was, uh, I think, over, over 500 earthquakes uh, just in the last little bit. Now, they're not big, huge earth, earthquakes, but they're still earthquakes nonetheless. And so uh, uh, it says, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, here it says the beginning of sorrows means birth pangs. So it gives us a picture of a pregnant woman who is about to go into labor, and going into labor, she is going to deliver a child. But before that child comes, she, there's going to be contractions, there's going to be pains. The contractions will get closer and closer and stronger and stronger. And so Jesus is simply saying these things that we just read about, and many more things, they're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. They're going to get closer and closer together. And so, but these are the things we're going to have to endure. And you know what? You say, it, what happens if I don't endure? You don't want to know. It's, you don't want to know. Why don't we endure? It'd be, you know, sometimes it's so, some people think, well, it's just so much easier to, to just, just give up and quit. No, it's not. Hell is not a, going to be a nice place to be at. You want to be living for the Lord. We're going to go through some difficulties, no doubt about it. But you know what? It's the rewards. It's when life is true, where I spend eternity. I tell people eternity is a very, very long time to be wrong. It would be better to endure some things and make heaven your home. You don't go to heaven just because you're a good person. You go to heaven because you've got Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. You've asked him in, into your heart, and, and he is living there. And so it goes on to say, uh, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, shall kill you, and shall be hated of all nations. We're beginning to see such a hatred for Christianity. Believe me, in this political season, it's going to get worse. It's now there's pitting, you know, Christian against uh, the world, especially evangelicals. Uh, the evangelicals are are becoming the target. Uh, of uh, many things and so it's but it's, it's not going to get better it's going to get a little bit worse yet uh so you they shall kill you that's not not good news but when you die you you know everybody's going to die at some point unless the rapture happens first it'd be better to go to heaven you know than, than to, to to miss heaven and you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake just think about that that just because you're, you're a child of god a christian that you believe in the lord jesus christ the devil is the God of this world. He hates the things of God. He hates the people of God. And so when you find people hating the things of God, hating Christians, hating the evangelicals, you realize that that is the spirit of Antichrist that has got a hold of them. And so they shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. You're going to have to endure the false teachings. 
there's many false things out there that and, and false people that tell you well you don't need church you don't need to be serving the lord you don't need to be filled with the spirit you know you, uh, all these things aren't necessary you better endure these things you need to be planted in the house of god you need to have your have your your roots down deep and i know that i know of people that have gotten offended and they have they don't come to church anymore because they're offended it's the devil that offended them, not some other person. They don't. They they they've nailed it down to a person. It's the the spirit that was behind it. And if you want to give the devil a black eye, start going back to church. Especially you know if they if you think that the uh, you know they don't like you there, you go back. You'll find out that people do love you and do care about you. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And because of iniquity, a rebellion against constituted authority. That's a whole sermon right there. I think we already talked about that. Rebellion against constituted authority. That is what is happening all around us. Rebellion. Because people are, are saying, well, we, we don't want you to rule over us. We don't want this. We don't want that. We want, to, we want free education. We want free everything. We, want to be, we don't want to work. We want the government to take care of us and pay us to not work and do anything. Well, again, that's, that's not going to happen. Okay. Because iniquity, rebellion against constituted authority, shall about the love of many shall wax cold. Now this is interesting. This talk about Christians, the love of many, because the word love in the Greek is the word agape, and so that only Christians, born again Christians, have this kind of love in them, for they can love the ungodly, they can love uh, anybody and everybody. But it says because uh, uh, iniquity, rebellion against constituted constituted authority, shall about the love of many shall wax cold. And so, you know what? You are going to have to endure uh, the, the uh, iniquity that's around you. There are people that are rebelling against constituted authority. Or they're rebelling against the things of God. And they'd like to pull you right along with them. But you're going to have to endure. You're going to have to make it through. It says, and he that endures to the end shall be saved. I just want to encourage you today. To, to be one that endures. Let me give you one more scripture. I had thought of that. It's in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. Uh, let me see if we can find it here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, aren't you glad God calls you beloved? Okay. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and unmovable. Be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You're a person that endures. I have faith in you. I know that you can make it. Well, I'm Pastor Gary Bightley here at Fredericton Word of Faith Family Church. If you don't have a good church home, we invite you. Why don't you come on down and worship with us? And when we say worship, we're not talking about singing a couple songs, you know, out of the hymn books. We're talking about getting down to the nitty gritty. We're talking about worshiping God in spirit and in truth. We don't rush through these things as a general rule. We like to take our time because we love God and, and God loves us and he loves to hear the praise and the worship come out of your lips. And perhaps you've backslidden, perhaps you've fallen away, perhaps you haven't been living for the Lord, or perhaps you're watching you don't even know the Lord, but you can change that today. So I'm going to pray. If you'll pray with me, I believe God will touch you wherever you're at. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me. He rose again. I confess him with my mouth. I'm not ashamed of what the Lord has done for me. I claim him and receive him as my Lord and Savior. And Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, that I might have the power that the early church had. And Lord, I'll be faithful to church. I'll, I'll be one that endures and makes it all the way through. If you prayed that prayer and you believe it in all your heart, I believe that God heard that prayer. God is moving in your life. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.